if you have a Hay Gears resin printer, this heats resin, and this vastly reduces peel forces that could otherwise cause your prints to fail. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, a few months back I reviewed the Hay Gears Reflex RS mid range resin printer, and whilst I had a few minor gripes, I found it to be an excellent printer. I even made the somewhat controversial comment that someday all printers will be like this. Now Hay Gears have their critics, and many hate what they represent. If you're not sure what that is, let me try and sum it up for you quickly. From what I've seen on the Reflex RS, I could imagine Hay Gears would argue that they are all about making the 3D printing experience super simple and easier on the user. You don't need to worry about leveling the build plate, as for the most part, this printer does it for you. You don't need to have to concern yourself with dialing in the resin or tracking down a perfect profile, as again, Hay Gears have done that for you. You don't need to master the third party slicing software as Hay Gears has its own, which is quite simple to use, and through it has built in video training support that really does feel like it's holding your hand. Quite frankly, a user with no printing experience would, in my opinion, find the Hay Gears Reflex RS one of the easiest printers on the market to use straight out of the box. However, this level of simplicity comes at a cost. To begin with, these are not the cheapest printers on the market. Secondly, and the bit that really gets the haters venting, you must use Hay Gears own products. That means Hay Gears only resin, Hay Gears only software, and Hay Gears only add-ons. So, Hay Gears give you a very easy printing experience and results that in many ways challenge apparently higher spec printers. But the trade-off is you have to pay more and you'll be stuck with Hay Gears merchandise. So if you hate that idea, don't watch my review of the Reflex RS and also stop watching this video right now. But if, like the thousands of others who are flocking to Hay Gears because all they want are nice quality prints and an easy life, well, Hay Gears have sent me a couple of things to look at that might make printing even easier. The first is their pulsing release module kit, and the second is a new resin. Starting there, PAF10 is a durable and flexible material with high breakage resistance making it ideal for tabletop gamers. It claims to have a higher drop strength, which I haven't tested, and a greater aging resistance. But what we really care about is how it looks, and of course the prints look great, thanks to this volcanic matte grey finish, which I really like. And obviously, this is the resin that you'll see me using throughout this video. When I reviewed the Reflex RS, I mentioned that as it was cold at the time, I really needed to use this Chitu Systems heater. And my regulars will know, I'm probably the longest standing advocate for heaters in resin printers. Now Hay Gears sell a heated resin tray, but frankly, the description is a little confusing. The text seems to suggest that it can't be used without the pulsing module. But then again, it seems to suggest that it can. Well, having watched one of the support videos, it does seem that it can work alone. Within the slicer, you'll need to select the standard tray. The printer itself will detect the heating tray and warm the resin through, though it seems to only go to a maximum of 23 degrees Celsius. I definitely feel Hay Gears need to make the wording on this page a lot clearer. One thing's for sure, the heater does work in conjunction with the pulsing module, and that's something that I think many people will find very interesting. From what I can gather, this surprisingly large device is, I think, an air pump. During use, it gives off a funky purpley blue glow, and suggests that trapped inside it is a mini Darth Vader using the force. 
it seems that Mini Darth and maybe Air create a cycle of positive and negative pressure within the release film, with periodic inflation and deflation. This creates a large appealing angle, reducing the force needed to separate the print from the liner. This in theory should reduce the chance of print failure. What I really like about this is that it also reduces the size of the support tips needed, and that, again, should lead to improved print quality. Hagias also make claims about improved speed and reduced resin use, and whilst this may be true, it's not something I can easily prove one way or the other. Thanks to the video support found within the slicer, setup is a very simple process, just largely a matter of plugging in tubes and cables. There was, however, something that scared me during this video. As you can see, there are holes in the release liner, two in fact. These are no doubt to allow air, or perhaps the force, to manipulate the liner. But I couldn't help but worry about potential leakage. I even wrote to Hagias asking about these holes, and they didn't seem to know what I was talking about. But as I'm a bit of a fool at times, and as these holes were in the installation video, I decided to go for it and see what happened. With the module connected, sure enough, the printer recognized that it was there and through Wi-Fi did a few software updates to make sure things were set up perfectly. Through these updates, I did notice that Haygears have updated their user interface to include a way to manually move the build plate, a feature that was lacking when I did my original review. This is nice to see as it shows that they are listening to customer feedback and updating accordingly. Using the pulsing module is easy enough. Within the slicer, select your printer. Then choose the module. That's it, it's included, but you'll need to do this every time. You then select your purpose, which remains as general purpose, at least for now. And then you get to select the resin. I'll of course be using PAF10. In addition to the standard 50 micron layer height, which is of course the most common layer height folks use, I'm very pleased to see a 30 micron option. This is my personal preference. You'll find that this will really sharpen and improve your print quality, but of course it probably doubles the time it takes to print. However, it's there and this is a precision resin so I'll give it a go. After that, you'll just import in a model and printing as normal. With a file transferred and the print started, it becomes obvious very quickly that the heater is working. I will say that it isn't fast. In fact, I'll actually go as far as to say it's slow. Even though it's only raising the temperature to 23 degrees Celsius, it took its sweet time over this making me wonder if it's just the warmth from the electronics inside the printer that's doing the actual heating. One thing I do like is that during this process is that the plate rises and lowers, mixing the resin. But after that, I've nothing else to show you because the clever bit is taking place between the plate and the liner. It's not really possible to show what the pulse module is doing but this also, of course, means that it's difficult to prove whether it's having a positive impact upon the prints. The price of this unit is, I have to be honest, very high, especially when compared to the cost of the printer itself. Couple this with the fact that we can't really see if the unit is doing anything, it's perhaps not Hagia's best marketing moment. I have done a few prints with this, though not as many as I'd like as time was limited, but these certainly have come out very well. Now this could be the resin, it could be the 30 micron layer height, or it could be the pulsing module. Ideally, it's a combination of all three. But in fairness, when I say that they've come out very well, I should really have said that they're stunning. The detail is incredible, especially when you stop and realize that the Hagias Reflex RS is just an 8K printer with 29 microns of XY resolution. If that isn't the pulse module working, what is it? Finally, the observant amongst you will be saying, hang on, what about those holes in the liner? 
Well, I expected a mini flood when I finally lifted the resin tray, but actually there wasn't. There was a tiny bit, but I think that probably occurred as a splash whilst I was removing the build plate or something. It certainly didn't seem to correspond with these holes. So what do I think of these Hagear's products? Well, the resin is certainly nice to use and it prints great. The flexibility is obviously a big advantage that I can see many people wanting. With regards to the heating tray, I think Hagear's need to make their wording a little clearer as they're potentially losing customers right there. The heater certainly does work, but it's not the fastest I've seen and the temperature range is a little restricted. The pulse module itself, however, is a bit of a mystery as we can't see any tangible results. Personally, I believe it works, but I can't really offer any proof to that effect. The only way to achieve that would be through dozens of tests with and without the module comparing results and resin use and such results would always be open to interpretation. All that I can say is that Hagears continue to amaze me. With just an 8K screen and admittedly tight control on the selection of resins that are used with their Reflex RS, the quality of these prints is outstanding. Without a doubt, it's outperforming apparently higher spec machines. And I know that's not proof that the Pulse module is doing something, but I'm not prepared to call Hagear's liars either. We can't see it working, so maybe we just have to believe the evidence of our own eyes. Family matters have been getting in the way of video production lately, so this video is a little later than was planned. But anyone interested in these or other Hagear's products should know that for the next day or so, there's still a sale on. There's links in the description that will get you straight there. And full disclosure, if you use these links and buy something, your old mate Vogman may earn a few pennies from this, as it is an affiliate link. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, and thanks for watching.